Well, when we moved the show to an hour later, we didn't realize we'd need that hour to get through that all-star game. Run It Back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run it up. Oh, it good yeah. Monday morning, the Monday after the All-Star game. Hopefully, Luca and everybody's safely in Mexico, wherever it is they were headed to. I'd like to introduce everyone real quick. Stadium Insider Shams, Sharania, Chandler P, Eddie G on the end there, guys. Um, look, I just want to set the scene for what we witnessed yesterday, okay? All in all, Damian Lillard had the game winner. All right, Jason Tatum went absolutely out of control with an all-star game record, 55. His teammate Donovan Mitchell dropped 40. If you're thinking these are absurd numbers, you are correct, Chandler. Let's start with you. Give us your thoughts on the all-star game. Uh, it, it's getting pretty bad. I got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> It's just there's it's not competitive at all. I feel like back in the day there used to be at least some sort of, you know, fourth quarter grind where they would kind of lock in, they would play a little bit harder. Uh, last night, I mean, was it entertaining? I guess a little bit. I, I just feel like it's now it's getting it's it's childish. If I'm a kid and I want to see all my favorite players, this is the weekend, this is the event to do it. And I think that's still, you know, when I have a son one day and he wants to go, I think it's a, a cool event to see all the people that you see on TV all the time. But if you're actually going to enjoy seeing your best, your favorite players compete, <laughs> this this isn't it and it's it's really lost it's 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 luster it's lost its excitement and i think from here on out i'm gonna act like i'm still an nba player and i'm gonna go on all-star break because <laughs> I, I i watched it for the show but good god yep. it was brutal. yeah i think the show is fair look we we had the tv version of it shams tell us please that it was better being there I mean, the game itself, I can't say it was better. For me, it was fine because I'm still able to talk to all the people I have to talk to. But as far as being at the game, you know, I spoke to players afterward. I'm, I'm gonna, they're going to remain nameless, but it really became like a layup line. And you saw in the first half, Paul George and Kyrie Irving, those are the two guys I think understood uh, in the first half that all you and then Jason Tatum eventually clearly especially in the third quarter that literally all you have to do is try to make an attempt to drive to the basket and you were scoring a layup <laughs> and so um there really wasn't much defense played and and obviously even even down the stretch of the game Mike Malone said that Kyrie Irving and Joel Embiid were the only players that were trying to play some defense and you could see Joel Embiid I remember one play he he, he made a layup and he really wanted an and one call that was the most emotion I saw that was, this is the second half most emotion I saw out of any player uh, all night was Joel Embiid Oof. trying to get an and one. And so I think uh, th th there wasn't much defense. Um, we didn't really get a chance to see the Elam ending in its, in its full effect, unfortunately. <laughs> Eddie? <laughs> I, I, I'm with Mike Malone, the coach of the LeBron team. This stunk. Like it, We fully made the transition from guys playing half-hearted and getting dunks to guys playing half-hearted and shooting just from far. And so what now we're watching like air balls and really bad bricks from half oh, court. Yeah. And just we're just watching a three-point contest. <laughs> that, the, the funny part about this tweet right here is that was the best part oh. of the game by far. And it, it was the really 30 was. seconds or so that guys played defense. And it was just one guy playing defense. And even <laughs> that guy was kind of playing defense. But like this being the best part tells me that they need to do this on Saturday. Just do one-on-ones on Saturday. I, I don't know if yep. the Stars will do it. I don't know if they won't. I heard Shea Gilchrist Alexander. He basically said, you got to pay us, which is like <sighs> insane for a first-time All-Star on a team under 500, barely holding on to the 10th seed. But whatever, <laughs> like, it's cool. I don't I don't know how they improve this. I think it just turns into this from here on out because the game is so jump shot heavy. I was watching clips of, like, the 93 All-Star game, and guys are getting fouled at the rim. Like, there's a, a lot of free throws. <laughs> I'm not saying they were playing like it was game seven, but they were playing an earnest basketball game. This is just a shooting contest now with a couple dunks here and there. And I guess two teammates kind of oddly going at each other when they get the opportunity. Uh, but it was awful. I don't know what they do to change it. I'm not with Shea. I don't think you just say everybody gets a million. I, if you gave me a million dollars to play a basketball game, I'd play the worst basketball game of my life, especially if it was automatically coming to me. So I think that would make it even worse. Well, the million, though, too, it, it, like guys are making so much money now, not not to 
poo on a million bucks, but it's nothing really at, at the end of the day, that's nothing. And <laughs> secondly, the idea that it was a shooting contest, they only needed two or three points there at the end to end the misery. And they kept just pulling up from half court or six feet. I'm like, just get this over with for the love of God. But yes, we are not the only ones that thought it, it wasn't the best basketball of all time. Here's Mike Malone. The amount of points that your team surrendered, is that going to leave a scar for you? <laughs> it's going to form over the scar that yes. was formed in Charlotte yes. back in 2019. You know, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be a part of a, a great weekend, great players, but that is the worst basketball game ever played. How do you fix it? Uh, I don't know if you can fix it. I mean, I give Joel and B, Kyrie Irving, those guys were like competing. Joel was imploring some of the guys to play harder, to try to get some defense in, but um, no one got hurt. They put on a show for the fans, but that that is a tough game to sit through. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, it's weird when Kyrie is the guy that the coach is looking to, to like get the vibe up guys, let's figure this out. What's happening. Uh, it, now, this is going to be the million dollar question, especially since we don't have games for three more days. So we have to fix this Chandler. I'm going to go to you first. How, how in the world do you fix the all-star game now? Here's the problem. All this is, is, is like Malone said, this is, this is flattering. This is an honor. At the end of the day, this is just kind of a notch on your resume, whether you're an all-star or you're not. And it's tough because I kept watching this game last night thinking like, all right, they're just kind of doing this. One, one quarter is going to win by one team. It's going to go to charity. Then the next in the fourth quarter, they're going to kind of bear down and, and you know, start going at each other. And they just, and they didn't. And I'm sure the team owners and the team coaches are actually kind of happy about that because look, no one got hurt and you can say all you want. You want them to play hard. You want them to be a competitive game. It never will be because the day they do do that and the day a player tears his ACL in the all-star game, it is stopping immediately and it's just never going to sustain. So it, it can't be money. Like Michelle said, these guys are making $40 million a year. I don't think they really <laughs> care about a million dollar bonus. Maybe their endorsements can bump up their their you know bonuses if they do this in an All Star game or whatever. But with all the load management, with all the doctors say, with all the team kind of holding guys resting players, they don't even play every game in the regular season. They're definitely not going to play as hard as they can uh, in the All Star game. And again, these guys are partying all weekend. They're hungover. They're 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 just ready to take their plane and go to Cabo or wherever they're going after this. Uh, it's almost it's become more of a drag uh, than, than an actual game. And there's, there's there's more competitive pickup games at UCLA in the summer than this. And it's I don't know how to fix it, to be honest with you. It's not money. It's it's not you can't go back to East first West and, and crown the home that, you know, whoever wins home court advantage in the finals or something, because there's going to be guys like LeBron on the Lakers this year that aren't going to care still because they know they're not going to be in the finals. So there's too many gray areas. I, I like the idea of one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe we can get some guys mm -hmm. to kind of do that. But then there's still the risk of getting hurt in one-on-one -on -one and then missing the latter half of the season. So it's a sticky situation because players are so popular now. Players are so famous on social media and they're so rich. They do not care about the exposure or the bonuses of money that they're getting this weekend. So it's it, they've kind of, you know, at a standstill here, in my opinion. Okay, so I want to get to LeBron, but I just had an idea. Tell me, Chandler, from a player's perspective, if this would even work. I don't know if guys care enough about being named an all-star. Like when they're like when their careers are done and they look back and they're like, oh, I was an eight-time all-star. What if you just pulled the all-star game? Like we're just not going to have it anymore. And then maybe well, you, if it was gone, they would miss it. Yeah, it sounds good to say it, but what I would do now if I'm an all-star and I don't play in the all-star game, guess what? I'm still an all-star. So I would do what Zion did. I would do what Kevin Durant did. It's not like anything happens, whether you're a replacement or you don't actually play in the All-Star no, game. No, I'm saying cancel it. I'm saying let's just stop. Let's just stop making the stupid mockery of an All-Star game. We're just not going to have it anymore. Period. I, done. We're done. Nobody maybe Yo, can kid. I complain? Yes, always. I want to complain about Giannis. I want to complain about Giannis real quick. I oh, understand he I was the captain coming. and <laughs> so much of it was made about him choosing the team and all that stuff. But, bro, if you weren't going to play in this game – Wear a suit, let Jalen Brunson play. I could not believe... Yo, if you tell me he doesn't care about image and all that stuff ever again in my entire life, I'm going to mention this. Well, why did he suit up for the All-Star game because and do all this stuff? Like, he's the move. face of the league. Just move, he's buddy. The, he's the face of the league. It, he felt he owed it to the fans to just show up for a minute. 
or 20 seconds as it was. Well, Great. I also, Great. I get and the that's team, what we got. I get the team captains too. Like if I'm on LeBron, LeBron's, you know, in a different, but if I'm like Jason Tatum, I think I'm better than Giannis. Why am I playing on his team? <laughs> Why like Kevin Durant, Kevin, Kevin Durant's got to play on Giannis's team. That to me is weird. And I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I hate the draft. Like Jaron Jackson, Jr. <gasps> first star. He's excited. We're getting there. But this guy, gets sit, this guy has to sit there, and it's almost like embarrassing and takes away from him being an all-star to sitting there like being a, a joke that he's picked last. Like, it all just how sucks. Is that, how is that embarrassing? He's still one of 24 dudes making a gazillion dollars to play basketball because sitting up on a stage. He's a big career. deal. That's oh, the you're the least. his career so far. And on national Are you kidding TV, me? it's like played to go last. Jokic was, was embarrassed. Yeah, it's embarrassing. was embarrassed. Well, I want to get to that because – that was racial, and we can get to that in a second. I'd like to, to get to. I want to get to the bottom of this Jokic situation. But Shams, we we did mention Giannis there, and we did see obviously he played the twenty seconds. But moving forward, when the games come back, any news? So he's going to get his his wrist evaluated today, and I think the Bucks will have a better idea today exactly how bad that injury is. But I'm told there is swelling in that wrist, and and that kind of gives some concern. There's not a break they don't think because X-rays came back negative, but. But clearly is some level, a level of concern. When you watched him try to pick up that trophy after the game, mm -hmm. he really needed to use his left hand. So um, we'll, we'll hopefully know more about Giannis' status today. Uh, but just going back to the game, guys, like I don't think they should abolish the All-Star game. I saw it in 2020 in Chicago when the first year of the Elam ending, and that was amazing to watch. That was super fun to see. Guys were competitive. It's all competition. It's all competitive drive. The guys, you know, last night, for whatever reason, you know, it just became a layup line. But usually <laughs> in 2020, that was that was amazing to watch for sure. I just worry that the energy from 2020 was very specific to 2020. And then that maybe it's just gone with like the younger in a lot of ways. Um, in a lot of ways, uh, more than one. Get off my lawn. I know I know we're, we're getting into that territory. Uh, look, we, let's just mention the draft as well. We're going to get back to LeBron eventually because the regular season is coming back and what have you. But the draft, that, that was all Eddie and KD's doing. So whether you liked it or not, this is the gentleman here on the end that you have to blame. Probably one of the funnier moments of the long, uh, drawn-out draft was this moment when Giannis had zero clue what the rules were. <laughs> my third pick... It's going to be one of the most exciting rising star, superstar in the league right now, John Moran. Uh, hold on. I hate to, I hate to break it to you, but he's starting. That's a, what? Oh, you talk about somebody's draft board being missing. See, see what I'm saying? See, see what I'm saying? They're trying anything, y'all. Giannis is trying anything, y'all. So, uh, let's so, go back. So, let's go another direction. So, uh, my third pick then. So, let me scratch this. <laughs> Out comes the pen. <laughs> so, my, my third pick going to be Shane. Shane gives a salad. Such a bummer, too, because the buildup was so good. He was so excited to pick Jaw. Uh, Eddie, how are you feeling about this? This was, this was your invention. Did you like it? <laughs> it was like the third best part of the game. It was it was, <laughs> it was Jason Tatum versus Jalen Brown. There was Tim's, and then there was this. This was easily the most entertaining part of the two teams against each other. Uh, look, it's it's got to be here to stay. I don't know if it needs to be this dramatic and this big on this gigantic stage. I think it, you know, whatever. Pro that's production stuff. But it was funny. We got the funniest moment. We got some personalities, <laughs> guys. We got Jokic basically saying, Laurie Markkinen is not getting picked in front of me. I don't care. And uh, it, it, it was good fun. I, I think this is what it should have been, and, and they found a sweet spot for this. Uh, should it have been 45 minutes when the broadcast on my TV said it starts at 7.30? Nah, like, we got to speed this up somehow. But, yeah, it was great. I liked it. Sorry, Chandler. I liked it. <laughs> Chandler, you hated it? First of all, it was way too long. It Other was – it was way too long. And it was it was somewhat entertaining. The jaw Giannis thing, that was actually funny. Like I actually laughed when I watched that. But I do I just, I just think like Jared Jackson Jr., yes. it's his time. He's an all-star. And it just it, it kind of publicly embarrasses you a little bit, is all I'm saying. Is it the worst idea? No, it brings a whole nother, you know, you know, thing to do at All-Star Weekend that's gonna be more entertaining than the game. I just think it's 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 so watered down now, and there's not much they can do to fix it because 
the players don't care. And now the fans and the media are starting to not care. So it's, they're in a tough spot because the weekend alone is a fun weekend and it's an honor to go there and to be a part of it. And you see all the legends and you're going to all these different appearances and parties and, and that's all part of it. And it's a great place to do it where everyone's under the same roof. And I understand they have to alternate the the venues too, but when you go Cleveland to Salt Lake City to now Indiana next year, they're not doing themselves any favors with the locations of the All Star Weekend and, and uh, either. So I mean, I look, don't they, I don't I don't know whether the guys on TV were lying or they genuinely had a great time, but they everyone was so positive about Salt Lake. I think they lucked out on the weather as well. As far as the draft, let me ask you this. Jaron Jackson being picked last. And by the way, Corrales just got in my ear and told me the NHL gives the last guy picked a car. Hey, there's something. Um, so is it, <laughs> is it worse to be Jaron Jackson picked last of the reserves? Or in the case that you just saw, Jokic, the reigning two-time MVP, potentially being picked last as well. Because just like Draymond said, I also think LeBron was going to go with the hometown favorite. So he would have been the last guy picked. To me, that's way more insulting and i really think there's something to it right chandler like is it because he's european like what is the deal with the guys in Jokic? because we've seen them vote amongst themselves it's like they don't respect him they don't well, respect him he said it himself his game doesn't translate to an all-star game he's not a pickup <laughs> ball player he's a constant movement you know offensive sets and and this isn't that he knows this game is a joke and he knows he's not going to give it his all and, and and they know that so i don't think there's anything to this i think it's you know the the all-star game is about alley-oops and dunks and isos and that's not the the best part of Jokic's game you know he's a pass first big that if you watch him in an all-star game it is a little bit slow and boring and he's not going to be as effective in that sort of situation but uh i don't think there's <laughs> anything personal here at all and honestly i would have taken like lori market in early on just to get the crowd on my side uh but yeah i don't think there's anything much here you agree, Eddie? I disagree with weird. him, though. Huh. No, I disagree with Jokic. He's absolutely made for this game. His passes in the first two quarters were some of the most entertaining parts of the game, and he was he was setting guys up. He, he knew what the assignment was. So I disagree in that sense. But I do, like, I'm not the biggest Jokic fan, but I think I might be now because I love how <laughs> much disdain he had for this entire thing, the pageantry <laughs> of it. The, the fact that nobody cared if they were winning. Like, he just seemed, he just wanted to go home so bad. Like, he just hated it. Luca, too. Luca was just like, why are we doing this? So, I, I love that. Like, give me a, a curmudgeon all, at all times. I, I'm all for Jokic. I think he should win MVP now. Like, off that, off that performance alone, give him MVP. Nice, nice suit, too. Like, I'm all yeah, for right? the suit. He didn't wear, he didn't wear gigantic fur like Shea. He didn't wear pants with nets on them like uh, Jaron Jackson. Like, I don't think Jaron Jackson cares about public embarrassment because he wore a net to the dunk contest. <laughs> I, I'm on I'm all team Jokic now. Let Give him the MVP. I think Jokic got a stylist in the offseason. He's just really been bringing the suits and whatnot or, or something. Something's going on there. Uh, Jalen Brown was another guy who just was not having any of this. <laughs> Every time they showed him, he looked pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite part. Uh, all right, so let, let's get to LeBron. He, of course, hurt himself, didn't come back for the second half of, a, of an amazing game. He had 13 points, though, in the time that he did play in the 14 minutes. He told reporters, though, about the rest of the regular season moving forward. It's 23 of the most important games of my career for a regular season. The type of mindset that I have, and I hope the guys will have, coming back off the break. Now, obviously, this is all fine and good if his teammates buy in, Eddie. Now... Are they going to buy in? I'm old enough to remember LeBron going into playoff mode that one season before the bubble and then missing the playoffs. So I don't, this is talk and this is great. And LeBron's being a, a politician and that's cool. I, I don't think this is 20 of the most important games of his life. I don't think it's even close. I don't think he's going to play in most of them. He's now like legit hurt. We watched his hand oh. bend back. Uh, we had, we put our, what do, we put our over under at five, right? And I picked under, yeah. I'm still picking under it. Sounds great. Great statement. But if they lose these first two games coming out, and, like, what is he coming back for? I don't get it. But, uh, yeah, ni nice quote for the for the social media accounts there, LeBron. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I think I got to go. I got to go over here with his everything going on, the scoring record, his legacy. He can't just come lose the first two or three games and shut it down. They made the trade. They've made an effort to better this team. LeBron has to play his hand 
it, his hand's fine. Like it, maybe he's going <laughs> to, after a week, he's going to go back and say his hand is actually, there's a fracture, whatever. His hand is fine. He's going to make a push here. There's no way he can just come down after this weekend, say what he just said and lay down when his team still has a chance to make this play in game. So I fully expect them to, to, you know, him to rally him to, you know, treat that, that sore hand of his. And I think he plays well above five game, five games. I, I'm, I'm with Eddie, but I said that I said that after the scoring thing happened. So um, dunk contest, you know what? I have an apology to make here. I picked Mac McClung to win because I wanted the chaos, right? I just wanted the league to get a little bit embarrassed. But my goodness, he defeats Trey Murphy. Three perfect on the first try dunks. Um, here he is with our own Shams leading up to the contest itself. How many dunks on dunk contest night are we going to see that we've never seen before? There's at least two that I know have never been done in the contest. Um, and hopefully I make them. That's that's the number one goal. But uh, no, uh, at, at least two. He, he's one of those kids that he either looks 16 or 40. I, I just don't know what to do half the time. Uh, but Shams, did he save it? A lot of people are saying he saved the dunk contest. I, you, you hear that every like three, four years, right? Like players <laughs> or acts like Zach Levine saved the dunk contest. I don't know if the dunk contest can ever be saved. I think that it could be back to the level where it's respectable. And obviously, Mac McClung stole the show Saturday night and he told me he had two dunks. And I remember I put that clip out. There was some hate, some positivity. Uh, I think the odds <laughs> also changed. So shout out to the odds. But the, the one thing that I heard in the aftermath is there were like two or three dunks that Mac McClung had not even the ones that we saw right there was a 540 and then there was that double pump over, over the two uh guys uh, two friends of his um there were other dunks that he had that he was he, he he's saving for next year if he's in the dunk contest <laughs> again next year which he which he will be unless he's not in the nba or or in the g league but um i mean the, the, the kid put on a show he's, a, he's he's a good dude and i think i don't know if he saved it but he brought it back to really really high level respectability in my opinion yeah, I mean, what this kid, he was the weekend. And I think everyone made the jokes about him and he's not an NBA player. And, and I was one of those guys as well. And I still think it's slightly weird that he's not an actual NBA player. And well, this, he is and, now. <laughs> yeah, and, and, technically. Sure. But listen, he. <laughs> Great he timing, showed right? Out. Yeah, he showed out. This dunk right here was really, really mm -hmm. nasty. The, the tap on the backboard reverse was really, really nasty. And obviously the appeal is this is a, you know, 5'11 white kid that looks like my accountant and he's jumping over. <laughs> that is really impressive. That is fun to watch. He's going against these nine, seven foot NBA players that are extremely athletic. And it wasn't even close. And he should have got all 50s. Lisa Leslie smoked him on one. On a, yeah, on a she did. Time, but this kid, <laughs> and, then, and then watching him, honestly, in the interviews and watching him, how humble he is and how he's enjoyed this journey and process. I'm, I'm super hyped for the kid. And this was his moment. And, and he took full advantage of it. And who knows? Maybe I mean, I think he still has to be on a team next year like to come back. There's a lot of these guys I've seen, these dunk contests, these street baller guys that they could fly around. We're not inviting them. So, how you know, what I mean, like he's got to be Change. on a rock. Yeah. It's coming. Eddie. Mac McClung has played in two NBA games in yes, his career. Counts. So I guess in that sense, he's an NBA. <laughs> I, look, watching him talk with Shams and then watching him talk at the dunk contest and then watching him introduce uh, Post Malone, he's such a <laughs> humble guy and just like really enjoying being there. I, it, it became really hard to hate him. I do kind of hate the he brought the dunk contest back stuff. Uh, I, I didn't. They kept saying a star is born. Guys, he is he's not a star. He, he's, he had a great dunk contest and he did really well. If we're calling him a star, we're stretching it a little bit. I had a friend of mine tell me uh, this is peak white privilege because he did a 360 and they called it a 540. <laughs> and I was like, that's that's what it's about, I guess, right there. Great performance by him and Trey Murphy. I'm disappointed by by Kmart Jr. Uh, but hey, it, it was a good dunk contest. It was a it was a awesome. solid. NBA Saturday night. Did it come Steph back? Show. Like it, <laughs> former teammate Steph Curry, by the way. Like just a little bit of slant from his guy, I'm guessing. But it, it was cool. It was cool. I don't it think he's a good. star. He got a Puma contract, and so congrats on the Puma contract. And I think that's dope. He it's won. a great story now. 
I want to see him in an NBA game dunk it. He's never dunked in an NBA game. So I'm holding the trophy. If he has dunked an NBA game. Eddie, NBA game. He's dunked an NBA game before. He's definitely dunked an NBA game before. He we has? Can pull the same I want to see the footage. Uh, Lakers, I need to see the Lakers. footage, Lakers. too. He, 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 he did a double pump Lakers. Though. That was but Summer yo, League. No, I think it was an NBA game. The craziest <laughs> thing. The cra- no, we, we got to pull up the footage. The craziest thing we got back to the dunk contest that I noticed being there was he made it – his like he made all his dunks on the first attempt. Hey, like usually yeah, you I see did. guys yeah. take two attempts, three attempts. Kenyon Martin, he Kenny Martin actually I think might have had the sickest dunk on that. I think Mac McClung had a nice dunk. I think Kenny Martin's first dunk up and under um uh windmill like that was nasty. He, it just took him three tries. Yeah. Uh, but what Mac did making it on his first attempt every single time, I thought that was very impressive too. Yeah. I'm with you, Shams. Like, I'm a purist on the dunk. Like, if you t- you can get one mess up once, and I'm like, all right, fine. But you lose me. You, it just, I feel like it's like, right. and I know they get three attempts now, and they get the, the minute 20, whatever the heck it is, but you got to get it on the first try. That's what Shaq kept telling everybody. Take, oh, we got the dunk. Oh, eat it, Eddie. Wow. Eat it. Eat wow. it. Wow. <laughs> Jokic should have fouled him. Jokic should have fouled him. This was preseason for sure. Shut up. Preseason. No, it's not. <laughs> Yo, this Yo, kid this is, is a star. one of those. This is what. <laughs> this is one of those. The yeah, game there is you over. Go. Why are you doing there you it? Go. And hey, then he's, he's dunked an NBA game. We pulled up the tapes. So why is he not on a roster for real? Like, why is he not on a roster on the reg? Like, why? What's the problem here? Because this is fun. Back told me I'm running back. But there are oh, enough bad teams, Because he's shorter right? than Shams. Well, he is yeah, shorter I, than all of us, Michelle, actually. But. I got homies in Orlando <laughs> that can do crazy dunks. It doesn't mean they can do anything else in, a, in an NBA game. I know, but I feel like he's going to put butts in seats. Like, you know, give everybody these illusions of grandeur. I don't know. I, I don't know. Back but only on running back. Eddie, like, Eddie, Eddie. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie you, you, you owe him an apology. Eddie was hanging out. Back check with Shams. Back if you buy a ticket to the Sixers game to see Mac McClung maybe play four hey. minutes, you no. you have issues. You have okay, issues. but that's the Sixers. The Sixers are in contention. I'm talking like all the teams that are not in contention. Like the Hornets, the Spurs. Like Put the them Spurs. on the Spurs. Rockies. Shut up, Eddie. Make a call. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Look, I think I think he should be invited back no matter where he is in life this time next year, just like on a legacy invite. Like it's almost no. like you're the reigning champ. You have to come back. Why not? You got to defend Michelle, your, if, your title. If, if he's working at Geico, he should not be in the NBA <laughs> dunk contest. No. I'm sorry. You know what? You know what though? I, yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be there next year. I mean, this is a guy. He turned down like 1.2 million dollars to play in China just so he could try to be in the NBA this year. See? And he and he ends up in the dunk contest. He ends up on a two way. I don't see how Philly can cut him anytime soon. I assume he'll ride out the rest of the season uh, on that two way, and then you go from there. But I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll see him next year in the dunk contest. Yeah, because uh, who was it? Ja already said he's not going to do it. Zion said he'll consider it. Like, I don't know what else you guys – nobody's coming. There's no white knight coming in way, that's going to save the day. Hey, you notice Ja had his own little dunk contest in the game, though. He wanted to give us the outtakes of what he could show us. But that's that's garbage, is it not? Like, you've specifically said you don't want to do the dunk contest, but yet yeah. tease us all with what you could. I it don't should be get all, it. It should have been all layups for him in the game if he's not going <laughs> to <laughs> crappy threes finger roll, yeah, finger roll. Uh, yeah it's fair uh god I, I actually i had more fun watching over the weekend than i thought i would um i just want to throw that out there i'm usually pretty negative but we do have some news russell westbrook making some news oh yeah he's going across the hall y'all gonna sign with the clippers after a buyout with the jazz um just from a petty standpoint i give it an a plus plus chandler but do you like it from a basketball perspective I do. I love it. We talked about this last week. This is a team that I think made the most underrated, impressive moves. They added Plumlee. They added Eric Gordon. They added Bones Highland. And now they get Russell Westbrook, who's been in the sixth man of the year conversation all year long. Uh, He's going to know his role. He's humbled. He's hungry. He's going literally right down the hallway to a a (laughs) way better team and situation. Uh, I expect him to finish out the season very, very strong and be a key factor kind of going forward while the Clippers uh make a push here and i gotta say looking at those i like the clippers out of the west i'm predicting it i like the los angeles clippers out of the west other than phoenix oh okay eddie i don't know if you want to respond to that first or the idea of chemistry on this clippers team now you you just decide 
<laughs> Look, as a guy who is quietly considering moving to another state, but has to juggle <laughs> like, yo, I have kids and they got school and all this. I get it, Russ. This is the right move. He stays in the same house. He just uses a different locker. It's cool. I, I think that yeah. the issue about the Clippers needing a point guard is a little overblown. <laughs> to me, they need to guard point guards. They don't necessarily need somebody to come give uh, Kawhi Leonard the ball at the elbow. But, but look, he's fresh legs. I think he's better than what Reggie Jackson was giving them, what John Wall was giving them. So it's an upgrade in that sense. I'm very fascinated to see it. And I think the thing for them is they have a coach so well-respected yeah. and so good in Ty Lu that he can limit his minutes as need be. He can bench Russ if he, as need be. He can try to get the most out of Russ. And Paul George is openly lobbying for him. So sometimes you got to hear your players out. you got to give them what they need. They are one of the most talented rosters in the league. I'm not exactly with Chandler, but this is absolutely the team that scares me the most if I'm the Phoenix Suns. They have all the wings you need to guard Book and to guard KD. They have the bigs to challenge DeAndre Ayton. And, 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 you know, you have history there with Chris Paul, and now you feel like you can guard Chris Paul because you have point guards on your roster as well. Uh, they're terrifying. So I hope they play the Warriors in the first round and they beat each other up and we never see them in Phoenix. But if they do, lock in for that series. Do not miss a second. That series is going to be incredible. Hey, when, when does that tampering find to Paul George arrive? Because this, <laughs> this is the definition of tampering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Tampering, schmampering. It's fun in games. Uh, I like a motivated Westbrook. I, I, I'm excited for him. Next, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Shams with the latest on where Kevin Love is going. When Run It Back Pat returns. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. 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 Run it up. And run it back. Run it back. Welcome back to Run It Back over the weekend. Believe it or not, other things were happening. Kevin Love getting a buyout um, from Cleveland. And now, where does he go next? He put a Godfather video up on his Instagram account, but I don't know if he thought that was Scarface. I can't figure it out, Shams. What is the latest on Kevin Love? <laughs> yeah, so he got bought out from the Cavaliers, and he, he will be signing with the Miami Heat after he clears waivers over the next 48 hours. And you know, This is something that Kevin Love, uh, and his group, they've wanted a buyout from the Cavaliers. They they asked for one last week, and the Cavaliers granted it to him. He's meant a lot to that organization. Nine years there, uh, two all-star appearances, and, of course, that 2016 NBA championship. So no matter where he wanted to go and play, Miami, uh, Philly, Phoenix, whoever he wanted to play for, they were going to allow him to go. And uh, he really narrowed in on Miami as, as his spot for the remainder of this season, possibly even after this season. Uh, having a home there, but he's going to have a legitimate chance to play uh, big minutes there behind Bam Adebayo, next to Bam Adebayo in that heat front court. They've been looking for a big man for the last several weeks. They have one now in Kevin Love, uh, who who believes that he has a lot more left in the tank. Um, and we'll see, we'll see just how much that is. You like it, Chandler? Yeah, I do. Listen, shooting is key, and, and this is now basically a, a, a stretch five man that you know, is a smart player, has a you know, obviously an incredible resume, and it's going to help this team. It's interesting to me that Cleveland obviously did him a solid. They let him out, they gave him the buyout, but he's now going to a team that's kind of right yeah. behind them in the standing. So. It's interesting, but I think this is just a courtesy. This is a respect. Everything he's done for this city, for this franchise, they're retiring his jersey. Uh, he earned this here, and, and I, I do think he will help the Heat. And like I said, uh, he's a guy that can stretch the floor. He still shoots a high clip, and you got to respect him. I mean, Eddie, you saw the standings. It's, the Miami's right now five games behind Cleveland, and that thing changes all the time. Um, do you think it moves the Heat at all in the standings? Uh, I mean, those standings are so jumbled, and we've watched the Heat play like they're one of the best teams in the league. We've watched the Heat play like <laughs> they're one of the worst teams in the league, and they've dealt with injuries all throughout their season. But they have one of the best coaches in the league, I think the best coach, and they have a playoff roster that's been battle-tested over and over and over again. And I think one of the weird side effects of having so many injuries throughout your season is Gabe okay, Vincent gets to play more minutes than he usually plays. Max Strauss gets to play more minutes than he typically plays. And you're getting these guys reps, then you're getting them ready for a real run later in the year. Uh, I love the fit for Kevin Love. Like Sean said, even next to Bam, um, you know, we all play mismatch basketball now. And if you are a big who can actually post up and score from the post – like Kevin Love is. Everybody talks about his shooting, but he's been relegated to just a pick-and-pop guy, standing-in-the-corner guy. He can he can help them in many ways, and obviously he's an incredible rebounder as well. I like this pickup for them a lot. Uh, can't wait to see him out there on the court and see what they do with them. 
Shams, is it surprising at all to anyone? I mean, look, it's one thing to do right by him because everybody's great relationship. Why you out? You go do what you want to do. But I, he's going to go to a team that's competing with them. What if this all burns them? What if it turns around and burns Cleveland? If it burns them and burns them, I, I also wonder how much this is uh, them maybe not believing in Kevin Love's ability to, to help another team. Like, he was out of their rotation. They, they told him for the last several weeks, you will not be playing here unless there's injury. So the writing was kind of on the wall for Kevin Love as a basketball player in Cleveland. And now, you know, but obviously he believed he had a lot more left in the tank that he can go play somewhere else. And I do think Miami, Philly, there were other teams out there that are willing to give him a role. But Miami was the team for him all along. There wasn't really anyone <laughs> close in consideration. But um, I, I think he feels like he can play the Cavs. Clearly, they didn't feel like he could play for them. And like Chandler said, this is a guy that did a lot for that organization. He sacrificed a lot when he got there, won a ring there. He's going to get his jersey retired there. I think both sides wanted to end this amicably, not in a position where they were kind of messing with each other on the way out. Ah, oh, such a good weather change for Kevin Love. I'm excited for him. Uh, Shams, thank you. Um, I know you're probably headed home at some point. We will talk to you in the morning. We will also take a quick break. And when we get back, the celebrity game, DK Metcalf was so good that the NFL is now drink testing him. That's amazing. When Run It Back returns. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Watch out, watch out for the train. We got Zion Williams. He got to make a good decision. Oh, Ray Oh, no. Say it with your chest. DK, the dunking machine. Yeah, that was DK Metcalf, who ends up with the MVP, 20 points, 10 rebounds, four blocks. Um, he was so impressive that his employers are now drug testing him, which is amazing. Uh, we'll start with him. Eddie, were you impressed? No, like he should not be able to win the MVP of this. He's a professional athlete He's in his prime. Why is he in this game? You can just tell like everybody's like, here he goes. Oh, my God. Everybody's just sick of him being out there. Uh, no, give it to him like a real celebrity. I want to start my campaign right now today. I want to be in this game next year. I like I'm going to take it way too serious. Okay. I'll be the Ron Artest of this game. Like I'll show up. I'll play defense. I'll be the Sean Taylor of this game. I will earnestly train to play this game. I want to play this game at least once while my knees still function as an old man okay. like I am. We, we got to get FanDuel behind this. We got to get Boardroom. We got to get Gina Paradiso Chandler. behind this, Kevin Durant, everybody. Yeah. We're pulling all the strings. I want to be in this game next year. It's in Indianapolis, so I know you guys need people to play in that game. I want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know no one's going there voluntarily. <laughs> This game was less I'm competitive in. than the actual All-Star game. So, no, I'm not really <laughs> I'm impressed by his athleticism. I'm impressed by his hops. But I, I knew that watching him play football. Him dribbling. <laughs> you can even tell the way he, he moves around on the floor. It's He's athletic, but but no. Like, look who he's playing against. Look, he, he's a man amongst boys out there. That's but, true. But, but no, I... No way. Okay. Can we pretend we're on the street right now and I'm some rando fan, Chandler? Chandler, Chandler, Chandler Parsons, Chandler Parsons. Hey, do you think DK Metcalf could play in the NBA if he wanted to? <laughs> Go. No, no chance. Mac, Mac McClung can't play in the NBA. You think <laughs> DK Metcalf can? It's so funny when people say this and they say it's athleticism, they could do this, and rappers want to be hoopers. No, it's the most ridiculous argument ever. It is very, very hard to be in the NBA. It's very, very hard to stay in the NBA. The, this guy's athletic, and he's stronger and younger in his prime of athleticism against guys that aren't. No, this was not very impressive, but he is a freak athlete. But no, <laughs> he can't play in the G. He don't think he could play there, a game, a one game. No. no. There, was a moment he, there was a moment he stood next to Giannis. And he looked like me standing next to Chandler. And he's one of the best <laughs> athletes in the NFL. It, yeah. There's no – zero chance. Speaking of playing in the NBA and shouldn't be and maybe should be, the biggest loser of the celebrity game was Dwayne Wade. I think his team won, I think. But the Who Jazz knows? the Jazz owner beat him in a three-point contest at halftime. I did see and that. And not only yeah. did he beat him, he beat him by a lot. Like, it wasn't even really close. So, biggest loser of the, of the weekend, in my eyes, Dwayne Wade. That's embarrassing. I thought it was funny, though. The owner said, I hope he hits 20. And I go, 
Has he ever watched Dwayne Wade shoot threes? Because <laughs> he's not hitting 20. He didn't hit 15. Yeah. Good, good job, D Wade. Good oh, job. Oh, the biggest winner was my computer, as I had to Google who everybody was, because I'm officially that old person <laughs> who doesn't know who anybody is in a celebrity. And it's just amazing. Um, and I did know everyone in three point contests. I feel very good about my knowledge there. Uh, Damian Lillard just reminding the world who he is defeats Tyrese Halliburton and uh, Buddy Heald in that final round. It, it, I don't know why. I always think every year, oh God, three point contest. It's so boring. I'm just, and I'm I'm so into it, Chandler. Were you impressed by Dame's performance? Yeah, I was. And if you do recall, Michelle, I did pick Damian <laughs> Lillard to win this I contest. Do. <laughs> Listen, I he's the most experienced. He's the most clutch. He's hit the biggest shots. He wasn't going to be nervous. Uh, guys like Kevin Herter, first time, who literally flew Ooh. to Salt Lake City just to do this. It's a tough outing and it's nerve wracking and all eyes are on you. But yeah, there was no doubt in my mind that that Dame was going to win this and and it really wasn't even close. I mean, actually, it was kind of close, but the, I just knew he was going to win. <laughs> it, it was it was fun to watch. I did, did okay. Nobody was worse than Julius Randle, but his kid steals the show every time. Eddie, did anyone surprise you, good or bad, really? Uh, my pick, Kevin Herter. I, I was <laughs> blown away. I could not believe. I went with the age-old rule: pick a white guy in the shooting contest, and I yep. lost. Uh, yeah. Looking back, looking looking back, Dame was absolutely the safe pick. I forgot that they have the long shot. They got to move that three-point shot out further. I agree. Dame, is, Dame hit one from beyond half court in the game. Move that out a little further. I, I'm sorry, though. I'm just an old grump. I want to go back to five balls on each rack, a money ball at the end of the rack. I see like a high 20. Somebody hit 30, and I'm like, did he make every ball? I was so confused. I'm old. It was Tyrese. I, I, it is, First it round. Is. First round, yeah, he I, hit I was like, Is that the record? Did he, did he <laughs> make every I, – I was – it, it, it was a lot. I'm happy he didn't win because of his form. I tweeted that they were going to bash for the kids for that form to win. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Jason Tatum. I don't think I've ever seen a pump fake in the three-point contest. <laughs> so a little bit of extra credit for that. I definitely shot him a text. It was like, what the hell was going on? Great uh, weekend for JT. All-star game record. MVP. New sneaker. The one and only yeah. pump fake in three-point contest we've ever seen. Monumental stuff from that guy. Love the sneaker, by the way. He was my pick to win. And I will say this, his measly 20 points. He held on a lot longer with those 20 points and was <laughs> yes. so excited about it. Then I thought, I, I was like, wow, I kind of love that he's so excited to still be in it. Um, look, we're, we're trying to improve everything, right, Chandler? We are, if nothing else, we are heroes to the game of basketball. So is there anything we can do to improve the three-point contest now that we're fixing the All-Star game? <laughs> Maybe have them shoot at the same time or at opposite ends so they're kind of going oh. at each other. But then it's tough because what if you just – I don't know how you draft or how you would pick who gets to play who. Like if Kevin Herter's got to go against Dame the first round, that sucks. And whoever gets yeah. Julius Randle, that's, that's, he's not really a shooter like that. But maybe that so it's kind of interactive and, you know, it's opposite ends so the balls aren't hitting each other. But honestly, this is entertaining. I love the idea of pushing the, the long shot even further back. Kids love half court shots. Kids love Damian Lillard and Steph Curry range, and this is this is entertaining. But um, yeah, same thing. I, I don't. That's about all you can really do. And these are all really good shooters. Like it's not like you need star. Like I, I would like to see Steph, Clay. I guess those guys that have historically great shooters, but. It is what it is. Maybe maybe throw them shooting in the same basket or opposite baskets. Who knows? But uh, I don't know. It's 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 all kind of stale at this point. <laughs> oh, listen to us. Doing what? We are in awful the same basket? Yeah. Right. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, All Star Weekend, Eddie. They should have. Oh wait, what are we doing? We're doing skills now. Eliminate oh, this. Just all go right, with fine. This, 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 I was trying this. to skip it because in my mind it was so bad. I don't want to talk about it again. But Team Jazz defeated the rookies and the brothers Ante Tacumpos plus Drew Holiday. Does anybody have anything positive to say about the skills competition? How about you, Eddie? <laughs> go. I was watching an XFL game while this happened. I have no clue. Wow. I flipped to this and seen the three passing circles. It was like I'm out. I'm just I'm just all the way out. I'm sorry. Uh, What's crazy I don't know is what? that. The Jazz one? My yeah. guy Walker Kessler. He deserves it. Whatever happens. What's he deserves crazy, it. Eddie, is I watched Jordan Clarkson kind of just so half speed go through so it. And then cool. I didn't you know, did anything else. And I looked back and I said, there's no way the Jazz actually won this with the pace <laughs> Clarkson was going. 
And he did. They got to eliminate <laughs> this. Just There's nothing they could do to make this better besides take it out. Kill it. Kill it. By the make, way, they were three killing fans do it. Clarkson. Like, get a fans oh. team. Get something like that. Like, do. I don't hate that. Anything that is just not these guys barely trying. Make, yo, uh, let's put Brian Windhorse, Sham Sharani, and, and Chris Haynes out there. I don't care who we put. But anybody but a three NBA players. I want to see if regular people Look, can beat NBA no, players not trying at this. Let's do that. I'm 100% in on this idea. God, see, we just fixed the skills competition, guys. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, we're going to keep fixing everything because we want to add. Now we want to add to the All-Star Weekend, the one-on-one -on -one tournament. We talked about it. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum playing one-on-one -on -one each other was probably the best basketball part of that entire game. Five million bucks to the winner. Eddie, huh. do you see it happening? I think... Look, if Adam Silver has done one thing, he's continued to tinker with the NBA. He's doing the midseason tournament, the play-in. He's, he's added stuff to All-Star Weekend. He's putting Ahmad Rashad in the games on the app or whatever that display was. That was, was. random. Uh, try this. They tried horse like 10 years ago, and it, it stunk. They did it in That's an right. empty gym somewhere else. They didn't even do it in the arena. Uh, they've had the one-on-one -on -one contest ages ago. I think it was in the 70s, and Pistol Pete won. It wasn't <laughs> as cool as people thought it would be, and it should look uh, – but try it. Like, try it. it what they really got to do is they got to figure out if guys will do it. Like, will John ja mm -hmm. Morant do the one-on-one -on -one contest with three dribbles or whatever? If, if, if enough stars will actually do it, you have to try it. I think it would be incredible. I, but I don't think everybody will do it. That's the problem with that. But here's the thing, too. I, I like this because once you do commit to it, you're in. It's one-on-one. It's -on -one. There's no help defense. You can't kind of halfway have not mm -hmm. do this. So whoever commits to it, it's going to be legit. It's going to be competitive. Like guys are going to get crossed up. Guys are going to get dunked on. And it's going to be way more entertaining than watching the five on five BS that we just watched. So I, I love this. I think you get a pool of, you know, eight guys, maybe even four guys and just have them even an next player. I'd like to see Jamal Crawford go at one of the best, the Marcus smart kind of add in something like that. But I like it I like because that. you can't, you can't kind of halfway do this when you're when you're guarding your competitive juices are going to flow. If I'm guarding Kevin Durant on an ISO, you're going to compete. And so I think this is the best way to actually get the most out of these guys that are there. I feel like that one's the most pride driven if it was it to is. happen one on one. Right. Like, yeah, I, that one feels like something's at stake. Uh, we're going to take a quick break when we come back. Ooh, the fashion was fabulous. Why not look at all of it all over again when run it back returns? God, how do you not love Himothy and his custom-made blue faux fur or whatever the heck that is? Guys, we didn't give any love to the Rising Stars game, but it was really fun to watch as well. I just want to say that. This is Jose Alvarado, <laughs> big weekend for him. Oh, big America's weekend sweetheart. for Alvarado. Yep. And I love yeah, By the way, I that love jacket. that coat. Immaculate. Stunning. It's stunning. Now, this, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, I think this one's real fur. So this is going to split the uh, the judges. Frank Lucas. Frank, he took he took the words out of my mouth. He got the Frank Lucas jacket on. Shay, yeah. not the greatest All Star game. Uh, no. all, all leather, all leather situation on Saturday. This is fire though. This is uh, this I, I, sorry, Jalen Brown. Just I just. But what's up with the attaches? What's in these? Are people bringing paperwork to these games? What's happening? That's just bad. straight cash. Uh, love Jaron Jackson. This jacket is Salt Lake hotness. What is wrong? Why is are you rolling your eyes? Last it. pick in the game, last pick in the tunnel. This stinks. <laughs> <laughs> DeMar oh. Okay, really, dude? What's that? This is. It what looks is like he's going to hit the slopes right after this game. I was going to say, that's a ski <laughs> outfit. All right, and Kyrie Irving's sneakers. I got nothing. I'm nope. not saying nothing. Nope. <laughs> I got nothing either. Great. Good job. I yep, love it. Not getting canceled because of his <laughs> shoes. Uh, all right, for the rest of this week and next week, we're an hour later. What we'll talk about tomorrow? Nobody knows, but we will come up with an hour of something. Until then, bye, guys.